Hello, family. So, uh, we are here to continue the series that we started on uh, interviewing most of the teachers that are on the cultural exchange program. And uh, this is an Easter Sunday, but uh, I went all out to bring my, my guest out today. So, we are in the park right now, and uh, she was supposed to be eating her food by now, but <laughs> for your love, she has to stop everything and come out here. Okay. So, our guest tonight or this evening is a teacher here in Colombia. She's also in Richland 1, and uh, she's a math teacher. For the rest, I'll leave it up to her to, you know, spill the beans out so that you know who she is, where she came from to the U.S., what she was doing back in Ghana, and all that. Okay, so uh, my guest here, I call her B, but she's going to mention her full name so that you know her in, in detail. All right, so the ball is over to you, B. Um, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm Beatrice Opong and I'm a Ghanaian, of course. I was a teacher back in Ghana. I taught for like 10 years. Before somebody introduced the opportunity, um, and I took it upon and I did the application. And here I am today teaching in the U.S. This is my second year. Back in Ghana, I was teaching in um, a senior high school in Brekum and Brown Hafo region for that matter. And I'm, I'm here in Colombia. I'm teaching currently in a middle school. And this is my second year. I'm teaching math. And so far, it's been good. Um, okay. Yeah. So, guys, so before we even delve deeper into the interview, I would want you to subscribe to the Yao Abre YouTube channel. This is the only place where you get the juiciest information on how to relocate to the u.s on the easiest route so it is mainly for teachers who are wishing to have a foreign teaching experience on their credentials so subscribe go to tiktok as well i have a telegram group over there click on the link it will take you straight to tiktok uh, to telegram where you have people on standby to help you with any question that you have on this cultural exchange program so i have in my hand all the questions that uh we've jotted down i don't want to miss anything that you are looking for okay so first she has introduced herself uh she said she's teaching here right in south carolina she's a math teacher and she used to teach in breakroom can you give a shout out to breakroom uh yeah let me be specific mm -hmm. i was teaching in jenny jenny senior high you know that popular town Gine, Gine. Gine. Yeah. okay okay but that's like breakroom west municipality that's okay. why i mentioned Brekum. okay so um i taught a little in the basic school i taught for like seven years in the basic school okay. and then before i left ghana i had taught for three years in that high school okay. and okay so i would like to wish all my people in Brekun, mm -hmm. my family my friends my loved ones a happy easter i really miss you guys and let's say hopefully you mm -hmm. will be seeing each other soon so that's it yeah. okay all right so uh, she stood us about her pre-migrational status in ghana so let's move on straight into the details. So, how did you hear of the program, the CEP, the Cultural Exchange Program? How do you hear of it? Okay, um, a friend, a very good friend of mine that was also a mate in university, okay. um, Valley View University, um, told me about this program because his cousin was okay. on the program. Okay. So apparently his cousin introduced him and okay. he also shared the information with me. Trust me, he didn't even pursue it. Like, okay. I, we came without him, but he's currently on the application, and hopefully, if everything goes through, he's supposed to be coming in this year. He gave you the link, and he didn't do it. That's it. <laughs> he didn't. Later, when I mean everything pulled through, and I was getting in touch, he was like, "I didn't even try it out." Good. But I did it. I was serious with it because I saw it as an opportunity, mm -hmm. having that international exposure, and I really, really wanted to get it. Okay. So I put in up my all, and I did it, and then here I am today. All right. So I'll just chip in this. You know, when I first heard of this, I, I was surfing on the internet, I think YouTube, that I got heard of the information on the cultural exchange program. So I'm a person who likes to research a lot. So I was all over the internet trying to find information about this. So I was in Ghana when I started my YouTube channel because I had learned a lot of information about this oh, wow. opportunity. And the first day my YouTube uh, first video came out, my teachers were just laughing at me that I'm trying to be a connection man. 
oh. someone who has never traveled before okay. but has uh, uh, all the ways and the measures to relocate to the u.s but he, ha he has no traveling experience so up to now people were just doubting that it is never true until my first picture i love to post a lot until my first picture landed on facebook where i was chilling on uh, i think in times square new york oh, wow. because i dream to work on that space and listen that's one place i really want to visit this summer that's on my list okay you're back on list i i need pictures from there i also <laughs> really love to post and i i love to say for like i search the internet for places in the u.s mm -hmm. i can visit mm -hmm. and that's one of the places yeah. i have on my list and mm -hmm. i'm definitely going there this summer okay. okay so it's, it's great that you already have the experience okay so i don't know why you're still doubting this is there is the real s if you are in any part of Africa, this is the real edge. Just follow my YouTube channel. I have a lot of tutorials on how to apply, how to get your evaluations done, everything you need to buckle up on this journey. So it is very true. This is my second guest that I'm interviewing on the uh, news from the other side. So it is true. Don't play with it. All right. Let's move on to the next question. So why did you decide to teach here in the U.S.? Okay, so like I said, I was considering the international exposure. Mm -hmm. I had been in the Ghanaian classroom for 10 years, okay. and it was like the same old thing. There was nothing new. Okay. You see how GES has been over the years? Um, we talk, but we don't do it. Okay. So we, we, we hear things about, oh, uh, incorporating internet in our teaching, um, mm -hmm. I mean, um, technology in our teaching, mm -hmm. it never comes to pass. It's, it's always been said, always been put in budgets, but we never see it happening. Okay. So it's like when you are in Ghana or when you are in the same thing for so consistently, you don't grow. Okay. Like your, your, your knowledge is, is basically the same every day. Mm -hmm. Nothing pushes you to go forward. And I'm a person that really loves change. I love to grow. So I didn't love the, like the fact that I was stuck. So when I saw this, I saw it as an opportunity to gain an international exposure, be able to broaden my, my, my scope of knowledge, get to meet new people, get to experience um, the culture outside mm -hmm. Ghana. And the fact that it was the United States, like, you know, Ooh. U.S. is like, I mean, the, the top of it all. So I was imagining being in an American classroom <laughs> where you have it all, like everything to your, dis I, I mean, uh, um, exposure okay. like disposal it, it, it was it would just be an, a great experience so i didn't i didn't joke with it at all so why didn't you choose togo Cote d'ivoire burkina faso i think all the other okay nigeria you could have gone there why u.s um like i said even if it came to the i mean the foreign world mm -hmm. i would have still i wouldn't have considered certain countries mm -hmm. As I did consider you, United States is, I mean, I mean, the topmost priority. It's the boss of US. all you Western countries. US okay. is the US. It's, I, I would say it's second to none. Like, that's to me. Um, you can argue if you want to, though. Argue, argue with your phone. Argue with your phone. If you are in UK, so, US is at the top. Yeah. If you are in Canada, US is at the top. I so, mean, argue with your phone. Currently, I have people I know in mm -hmm. UK that are still reaching out every day, How can trying I to get opportunities Good. to move into US. So, like, US is that's a godsend opportunity and Top nobody notch. will play with that so okay. i didn't play okay. with that yeah. so she is saying she was motivated by the experience for me Lazar, you if you've been watching my videos i was juggling between three jobs i was a fashion designer i was a teacher i was a, a trainer all these weren't giving me so much so apart from the experience i was motivated by the money and uh she can't I, know, that. I know that the, the money is also a very important point. I love the experience and I love the money as well. Let me be frank, because being in Ghana and earning, even a teacher without any commitment to the bank, you mm -hmm. wouldn't earn more than 3,000 Ghana cities. And th that is not anything good to write. Oh, but about. I heard there has been some increment recently, so... Well, that's recently, but back <laughs> then it wasn't. And then looking at all the bills and expenses, and coming from a home in Ghana that you know that family helped you to be who you are. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of responsibilities on your shoulder and you have the, the mindset to do things, but you don't have the ability to do it. Oh. That kind, kind of limits you. So it was the experience. And then, yes, it was the money because the money is good. Trust me. At the end of the month, when you see that money hit your account, it's, it's a whole lot. Okay. Okay. So at this point, uh, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, I don't know what you're waiting for. 
the Ghana Jollof, the Nigerian Jollof isn't going to do anything if you do not subscribe to this channel. So the name is Yao Abre on YouTube channel and uh, on TikTok as well is Yao Abre. So hit on the subscribe button and uh, also click on the notification bell so that you do not miss, you do not miss any of my videos. All right, so at this point, I'm going to ask her who her sponsor is and how the process, the application process and the benefits that uh, they, they rendered onto her aside the other companies that were supposed to be chosen as well. So who is your sponsor? My sponsor is um, Faces, that is Foreign Academic cultural exchange, exchange services. services okay and truthfully i didn't know about any other sponsor until i got here okay so for me it was just faces and when i got here that was when i learned that there was epg there was epi mm -hmm. there was alliance and there were a lot more other sponsors okay. so i can only talk about my experience with um, mm -hmm. faces so the application is a mm -hmm. link that takes you to the website and then mm -hmm. you get to fill out just like any normal application okay. your personal details your educational background your work experience and before you qualify to be on the application you should at least have a degree in education wait guys she is mentioning the requirements again i've always been reiterating on that so she's going to mention all the requirements all the documents she tended in before she was accepted or approved for the program so let's pay much attention to that so at least you should have a bachelor's degree. Bachelor's degree, okay. And you should have at least two years experience in the classroom. Okay. So that's the basic requirement. And during our time, drive the driver's license wasn't a key requirement. But uh -huh. currently, because I was helping other people with the applications this year, but there have been some sort of revision. So now the driver's license is also a keen requirement. Okay. And it is so because, I mean, this part of America, South Carolina, it's not so busy. Mm -hmm. So we don't have trains and buses mm -hmm. running regularly. Okay. And you you cannot, you cannot afford to be late mm -hmm. to school. Mm -hmm. So it is, I mean, assumed that you should know how to drive so that when you come in, acquiring a vehicle is not so much of a problem once okay. you get here. So you can acquire a vehicle, and then once you know how to drive, you can go to school or work on time. The key word is on time because you cannot afford to be late. This is not Ghana where we can put up with excuses. <laughs> I mean, the white man does not take excuses. Mm -hmm. You have to work for every single penny you earn here. Mm -hmm. So uh, the driver's license is not a keen requirement. Okay. And so when you fill the application, um, whatever um, documents you need as and when you go on will be requested and you upload them, your certificates. Mm -hmm. And then your transcript, the transcript, you cannot upload it personally. Okay. You would have to request it from your institution. Mm -hmm. And then they would send it directly to FACES. Okay. And also, you would have to do the credential evaluation. Audition. Okay. So I think that is when the transcript comes in. It will be sent directly to, we work with Spamtram or okay. any other evaluation company that you work with. And they will evaluate it. And that's just a formality. They just want to make sure that you're certificate is on the same level, level as, the US. As, the, as the american standard and and basically yes it is because a lot of teachers that come from ghana let me say we are well deep in the content even more than they do yeah so they know that yes we have the we have the means we are well equipped with knowledge and then with the content but it's like i said it's a formality you have to prove yourself so you have to go through the process some people get to start with the application they're like it's a whole lot it's a whole mm -hmm. lot because mm -hmm. I have a lot of people that when I came in, they reached out and they were all interested. We want to travel, we want to travel. They start and then halfway, they, they just drop okay. because they think it's a whole lot of things. But with faces, I would say that one of the easiest it's process. worth it because you are, you are basically going to be paying nothing. Uh -huh. Faces takes care of all your expenses. The only expenses you have to pay is your visa application fee mm -hmm. that is when your application is selected and service fee and service fee but the good thing is when we got in the service fee was, was reimbursed okay. to us we, we we got it back so so what more like take your bags and come to us simple take and yes one and yes one yes, <laughs> yeah the flight is being booked. i remember when i went after visa interview i didn't even know we we're going to be getting our tickets so you just, dollars, yeah uh, i subsidy. just emailed them i i went for my interview and it was successful the next morning i had an email book your seat i'm like whoa what? 
because I wasn't even expecting that. So everything is fully funded, fully funded. And so you will just have to put in the effort, do the application. It is worth it. Trust me, it is more than 100% worth it. Mm -hmm. And then when you come in, you put in your efforts and then you prove yourself as, as I mean, being effective in the classroom as well. Okay. And then it's a contract and that's why it's paid for. So when you come in, at least for the first three years, you cannot leave your job. You have to do it. Okay. And being at a cultural exchange program means that you are coming to experience another culture and then go back to share your experience. Uh -huh. So whether you would um, want, there is, all, there, is an, um, there is an option for a two years extension, extension, which makes the whole program five years. And after the five years, you are expected to go back home, share your experience, and then you can reapply after two years. Okay. which I have people that have testified to the fact that they went reapplied and they have come back. Okay. So basically once you have been on the pro program before, you have like it's it's like a sort of um, guarantee that when you reapply, they will consider your application. And I have people who on your second entry had H1B directly. Yeah. Because they have spent or uh, paid their deals in the district that they were formally teaching. Mm -hmm. So a quick review of the requirements. She said a four-year bachelor's degree if you started with a teacher's diploma fine it's okay if you had another uh, top-up degree it's also okay so when you're going to do your evaluation of credential you're going to combine that two credentials or two certificates to get or to amount to the four-year degree that they are seeking for you also need your uh, resume three recommendation letters from your school your principal your assistant principal or your colleague okay so these are the three things that you need and uh, you're going to need your teacher's license, your teacher's license. So it does not run through all the sponsors, but at least since you are saying you are a professional teacher, a licensed teacher in your home country, it you should be able to, to it, you know, yeah. prove that you are a teacher in your home country. So it is that simple. I don't know why you're still doubting. Why are you going to pay like ten thousand or fifteen thousand dollars to a connection man to bring you to the U.S. with a B visa, a visited visa? So you're going to. Uh, uh, wander yeah. around with nothing in your Where hand. Where you're gonna strive to even get a, you wouldn't have a working permit. Mm -hmm. But this is the, um, I mean, we got in for the first two weeks. I know we will get there for the first two weeks. You get your social and all that. And your your social security, your work uh, is is being processed, and then you start work right after, and then you start receiving money right after. But I have people that come in with other. Um, visa categories and it takes them a whole number of months to even get working permit to be able to work i mean this is one of the easiest way you can get to travel to the u.s easiest it's way. one of the easiest way and even if you don't want anything look at her accent listen to the accent when you actually cry the accent will just what else are you waiting for guys so uh, uh, come on for the accent clarify that because <laughs> i know that a lot of Ghanaians when they hear people that have been, that are working in other countries talk with the accent they, they feel like we are trying to imitate them mm -hmm. but the the, the actual um, reality is the fact that we are teachers mm -hmm. and what is teaching if you cannot communicate to your students Good. so what makes teaching effective is if your students can can listen to you and understand what you're trying to put across and when I came in I realized that when you start to talk, you know, English is our second language no, as Ghanaian, so yeah. we are still learning. And so there are a lot of words we pronounce them wrongly. So when you're in the classroom and you're teaching, students will be trying uh -huh. to understand what you're trying to put across. So we have to learn to talk and pronounce certain words the right way in order to make communication effective Good. so that the language doesn't become a barrier, I mean, Good. in the classroom. So it's not like Yashada, but I mean, we do not pronounce a lot of words right in Ghana because, and I wouldn't blame anybody because we are all learners. Uh -huh. That's not our language. So when you come to the owners of the language, you got to learn it the right way, uh -huh. especially with their teeth because we, I know you'll be saying letter. You'll say letter. letter and they'll be like, huh? What are, you, what are you saying? So you have to go by letter because that's the right pronunciation. So, I mean, like you said, you get in and then... The accent is just gonna <laughs> pop up like that. So okay, good, that's a plan. good, good. So uh, if you haven't heard of anything, I think we, in Ghana we used to talk in the British, British accent. Okay, so here in the US, the T is transformed into a D. Yes. Computer, 
letter so that said yeah. you are not faking but you, you need to communicate well with your students because i've had students who are always asking mr aubrey what do you say exactly and if they ask you for three times and you are still not grasping it they'll say okay never mind yeah that's, but, the, that's the word they love so sometimes <laughs> when i see it I'm, I'm not able to communicate i have to write the word on the board and they'll be like oh that's and what you meant pronounce, yeah so when they do for now you, you have to learn so the next time good. you don't repeat that same mistake because okay. it would make learning slow if you, you cannot communicate to them effectively and on the on the fun part you know that i almost bit my tongue when i tried to you know uh, imitate one of their their, their vocabs or accent i almost bit my tongue so when you come you, you're still going to try that yeah. don't worry now to the next question uh we're going to talk about what are some of the subject areas that uh faces do seek previously i interviewed one from tpg they mentioned their requirements this lady is from faces so she's going to talk about the subject areas what are some of the subject areas that faces currently is taking okay so it's mainly math mm -hmm. science okay and um, uh, uh, I'm trying to... The EMS, English, Math and Science. And then this one, this... Special Education. Special Education. Back in Ghana, we don't really pay attention mm -hmm. to Special but Education. It, it's a high demand we here. We don't even respect um, teachers there because we think they are just in the... I mean, students with disabilities. Yeah. But America, Special Education is a keen requirement. Every school needs a Special Education yeah. teacher because a lot of these students have behavior issues which can be handled by these those are the um, professionals that can handle it so i mean they are hot cakes special education teachers are even more needed and considered more than we we the regular teachers so those are the the more uh, the four required uh, four subjects that are viable mm -hmm. english math science and special, and education. Then special education so no we stand then uh, if you go to faces uh, website at the moment I know people who came with science. I know people who came with physical education on faces. So yeah. that is not a limitation. Always go and do due diligence. Dive into their website. They are going to publish all the subject areas they are demanding for. So that is it. And surprisingly, special education salary is quite higher than yeah, us. Than, than the regular teacher. Yeah, for the general content, special education is way up. And to add to that, yes, I mean, they consider PE as mm -hmm. well. They consider even art mm -hmm. but those areas are not of high, high demand. demand it's yeah. as and when they need those teachers Good. but regularly it's math science special education okay yeah. so before we move on one sad story so i applied to uh epi epi put me on hold with no explanation no reason whatsoever and i applied to faces faces was just urging me on i turned it in any document that they requested of me and sorry to say they told me my kids are still younger so if you are wanting to apply to phases make sure your none of your kids is below five years and they have a reason for that yeah the reason is that um it's not like your kids should not be more than less than five years mm -hmm. you can decide not to put your kids on the application for the means for the initial stages once you get the opportunity to come here um and you want to file for them you can at the right time. Mm -hmm. So for the meantime, you you being the applicant, and you the need principal to applicant. Here. So you can decide to just take them off any time they are due. And mm -hmm. the reason is that um, preschool is expensive. Very expensive. Um, schools are like yeah paid by government and by uh, preschools. I mean, but preschool not. it's not. It's so looking at the, they don't want you to be I struggling mean, at your early stages here. Have a sort of inconvenience because you just came in. You haven't settled in yet you are now trying to i mean gain grounds and then you earn money and you still have to use it to pay for preschool that's gonna like make life a little bit uncomfortable mm -hmm. for you okay. so they would prefer that if you have kids below five years those are the, the kind of uh, kids that okay. go to the preschool then you have to hold on so that if they are above five years then they can start straight up from the okay. um kindergarten and then go upward so it's not for any bad reason. You know, these people are so passionate about family. That's why I said, don't put it on if you want. Because I have a cousin that applied mm -hmm. and everything was perfect. They picked him and that was the only reason they had to drop him. Because he had a baby less than five years. Mm -hmm. I spoke to our coordinator. She was like, 
I know you're a good teacher. I could have considered you. But uh, I was trying to talk her into the fact mm -hmm. that my cousin was going to come. And, and bring them later on. And bring them later She didn't like the idea because they are so passionate about family. Mm -hmm. they, they believe that every child deserves equally motherly love and fatherly mm -hmm. love. So you are going to leave your baby because you need to come and make money. It's like your parents are okay. money of your, over your child. So to avoid all these inconveniences, don't put your children on the application okay, so if they are less than five years. Okay. Once you get in, filing for them becomes less easier because you are already here. Yeah. So That's she it. just spelled one of the hacks to applying to faces. So that is it. Now to the next question, uh, what were some of the financial commitments that you had in phases? So uh, even before you come in, I when I calculated all the amount that I paid, excluding the uh, air ticket, I spent like then time was uh, almost nine thousand Ghana cedis. Currently, let's say about uh, seven hundred fifty dollars. So it doesn't cost so much. How much did you spend on the whole process? For phases on the whole process. Excluding the ticket. Excluding the ticket. And excluding the money that you brought for accommodation and all that. Yeah, I mean, that's like your personal money. But for the application itself, the money you would have to pay is just for the credential evaluation, evaluation. and then your um, service fee. And the service fee. Okay. And like I mentioned earlier, even the service fee is refunded when you get in eventually. Good. Good. So you wouldn't spend anything. It wouldn't amount to even $500. $5, yeah. It wouldn't be even up to 5,000 Ghana cities with, yeah. with faces. But that's the problem of Ghanaian teachers now. Uh, I don't know about teachers in Nigeria, but I had one teacher from Nigeria who was complaining, said the, the, the money for the evaluation is costly. And I said, then you're oh, not serious. Yeah. That's the only thing that's, you are paying on. I, I was helping um, a friend on the application. Mm -hmm. And when she got to paying the evaluation, you know, she was talking me into paying it for her. <laughs> she was seeing it as, it, and she was giving me the clue. What if I do all this and I don't get the opportunity? You cannot be negative about application. But that same person yourself. will be willing to pay uh, ten thousand dollars for yeah. a movie. Yeah, as come if here. you know, later on when this UK came on, <laughs> she was interested and she wanted to do. She wanted to get involved in that. And it wasn't assured. Uh, so I, I said it back. To, I said you, you didn't want to pay like three thousand Ghana city for evaluation. But you want to pay like 1.2 billion, billion Ghana cities. to go to UK. <laughs> like, how does this make sense? So, teacher, it's up to you. I don't know what we are holding the money for. So, I have one person I applied for. Uh, she was able to raise the money for the evaluation within two months' salary. So, it's an investment. I don't know what you're waiting for. Don't hold on to the money. What is the kind of year? What are you using the money for? So, and two months, I three months' salary can do that. Day, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth, it. it's worth it and so, it's going to last for five years this same result that you're going to get from the evaluation you can use it to apply to as many as sponsoring companies that you want to 10 companies five companies you can still use it for that so it's an investment it's, it is an investment so that is it for the third uh, section of the question now let's talk about the relocation the first question i'm going to talk about so when did you go for your visa and what was the feeling you got when you, you had the almighty U.S. visa in your passport? <laughs> All right. So I remember that whenever, I, I mean, we love to travel back in mm -hmm. Ghana. I had a group of friends. We love to travel within the country, mm -hmm. like go for holidays. And we got people telling us, why don't you try going out like Dubai mm -hmm. and other places? At least travel. Let Where is be, the money? Let there be the some visas in your passport so that if you want a, a, a major visa like u.s visa they you can, can get that because you have a travel history yeah and i didn't have any travel history mm -hmm. a virgin passport a virgin passport for that matter <laughs> and going to the embassy with my virgin passport but with my ds 2019 mm -hmm. assured that 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 is like an 80 percent assurance that you are going to get yeah. your visa I remember that day I was in line and I don't know if I should call it a bad day because there was they were bouncing a lot of people <laughs> and I nearly went down on my spirit. I'm like, is this is this a bad day? What what's happening here? Because we were six people that came in as a group from mm -hmm. faces that year and five of them had already gone for their interview. Mm -hmm. They all had their visa. I was the last one and they were all waiting on me. And they all <laughs> went and come and share their experience. And it felt like, oh, it was a good experience. They had it easily. 
so that day seeing a lot of people being refused i was like is, is today a bad day you were like a samojian trying to play ghana's panadi oh yeah and then on the second third i'm like oh these are f1 visa i mm -hmm. mean category category they are students they are seeking for student visas i am an exchange cultural uh, um, teacher, teacher and i'm seeking for a j1 visa america needs my services mm -hmm. because i'm going to so teach. there's no so way there is no way i am going to be refused and trust me i went there and i was asked three major um questions when you get to american embassy the very first question i heard everybody answer why do you want to go to america that is a question they will ask everybody once you get in front of the counselor and you should be straightforward you should have an eye contact because you know the, when when you're talking to a white man and you are looking aside, they are trying you are trying to prove to them that you are guessing, and that's what they hate. So have an eye contact with them. Be confident, not overconfident, <laughs> but be confident to a certain level, and then put your words right. So why do you want to go to America? Because I have a job opportunity. I I am being requested to come and teach. That simple. And then she asked, um, what, how how many years have you taught? I said for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then he said, where is your proof of, of employment? Mm -hmm. So when you're going to the take embassy, take every, every document you have. Document. I even went with as far as my JHS certificate Good. because you don't know what they're going to request. Good. So that was, so proof of employment is my first appointment mm -hmm. letter. What if I didn't have it there? Good. That would have been a turn down. And I had it, I showed it up. And it was, I mean, um, it was valid. And then the last thing he asked, um, how are you going to middle school is a little tough how are you going to get students to listen to what you have to say and i'm like uh, yeah middle school is a transition you know oh. students are going from elementary to middle school and we are moving from childhood to a little bit of adulthood and they are stuck between adulthood yeah. and childhood they don't even know themselves they are trying to find themselves so it's a whole lot so it's about incorporating what they like mm -hmm. into the lesson mm -hmm. and in a way they'll feel like they're having fun but okay. at the end of the day or indirectly you are teaching so he stood there he was he nodded he was like hmm i feel like you're going to be a good teacher <laughs> and then Wanyang. he put a stamp on at that moment so they'll give you this small sheet that you're going to use to yeah, take your passport from dhl at that moment my heart dropped <laughs> and i haven't been to heaven but i feel like american embassy is second to heaven the discipline <laughs> Like you get, like I went that day. I went for my visa. Sarkodie and his wife Tracy came in with their children. They come, you refuse as well. No, no, nobody even like you dare not. You no, dare on not on a normal day. If I had seen Sarkodie, I would run to him. You dare pictures. not. No, he joined the queue like everybody. Good. Like it's there is so much discipline, no noise, so quiet. You dare not. The only people you hear talking is the counselor and whoever is being interviewed. So I realized that when people are even giving the granted the visa, as much as you're happy, you can't jubilate. Unless we you all get have out. to walk out of the building and then go and do your air <laughs> out there. That's it. So the, the feeling was so great. Good. On my way home from the embassy that day, I called my mom. I called all my loved ones. I, I was so, I, I, it was, it was, I mean, it was beyond description. Mm -hmm. I was so happy. I laid in bed that night. I was thanking God and I was just imagining myself <laughs> in the air already. Like, it was a great feeling. And like I said, to the to the fact that I didn't have any travel history mm -hmm. and the first visa I obtained was no other country than the United States of America. It was a big feeling. Okay, so yeah. I'll always go on the fun side. So if you want a place where you have motivational speakers, psychologists, uh, to advise you for free, go to the American Embassy. <laughs> Before you yeah. enter, there are some people, that, anybody who's rejected, boss, I be you at next time. More of them, more of them. <laughs> if you want professional psychologists, motivation speaker, I said go to the American yeah. Embassy at Cantonment. Yeah. So uh, she mentioned year 2019. So if you've gotten, if you've aged your PI interview, your principal interview, uh, you'll be sent a job offer or a, a letter of intent. So it's basically that you've been offered a job at this school district. This is going to be your salary that you're going to take. Yeah. And now uh, you're supposed to start job on this on date. date. So after that, your agency is going to send you something we call DS 2019. So the DS 2019 is a, a document that uh, the US CIS will send you. It has your school, where you're going to teach. It has the amount you're going to take. 
it has any document that you fed uh, your sponsors. So if you go in there and lie, I'm sorry, uh, you'll be denied. Mm -hmm. And in this line or in this route of relocating the US, I said it's the, one of the easiest. It is 90% assured. If you are being denied, it's from your house. Who fear about you for? Oh, yeah. It is nine percent assured. Because with the DS twenty, let me add to that. The DS twenty nineteen is like it's like your your pre visa. Mm -hmm. So that is already giving you the assurance that you have the visa. That that proves to the counselor that you have a job offer in the United States and they need your services. So it's even an honor for them to give yeah. you the opportunity to come here to work. So you only have to get your, your words right when you are before the counselor. Do not lie, like you said. Be, be be consistent with your information whatever you provided your... in your visa application whatever you provided to your um, sponsors when doing the original application you have to go with that same information so that you don't go and mess up things okay so you would also need your ds-160 so i'll make a video on that how to apply for ds-160 you're going to use the ds-160 to apply for the interview date so these are the three things that you need ds-2019 ds-160 and the interview date so we'll make a full video on that so she's gotten the visa now when did you leave ghana and uh okay so the date you left ghana and the arrival date here in the u.s um so we left ghana on july 19th okay and by july 20th you were here seven no before 7 a.m i was we were at uh um, jfk no we we came through uh washington washington okay yeah. uh uh Dallas airport yeah Dallas. so we, we we had a transit and we had to wait for like four hours before getting on our next flight to Colombia. okay and that was fun because we even got the opportunity to look around a little good I mean, and then have some good food and all, all right so on on the flight aspect so if you haven't traveled before make sure the tickets you are going for should have a longer layover time the layover means transit mm -hmm. so you're not going to get a direct flight to maybe where you're going to. Washington and uh, JFK are the entry points to the U.S. So, if you are going for any flight, make sure the layover is quite over three hours because you have never traveled before. If it's lesser than two hours, it is possible you might uh, uh, miss your flight. Because especially, uh, I mean, those two, uh, I, would, I wouldn't even say Washington is big. Uh, JFK is also big. And trying to locate even your gate, the so boarding next, gate the boarding gate is, is, is might take you an hour bit, yeah because we had to take a train wow within the same airport because it's a long distance you cannot walk so you need more time to be able to locate your gate and then be settled in before your flight and the gate can even change even when we go to that gate always checking you your phone checking your phone and your screen there is a screen because the gate has to change like one hour to the flight and we have to move to the the, the next gate that we were given so if your layover time is less than two hours you might miss your flight it's, especially if you're a first timer because you wouldn't have the experience so and if you do not love to read inscriptions guys make sure you start learning anything that you see read because when you get to the airport no one is going to you know be helping you out except that you are so bold enough to ask any police officer or any immigration officer so make sure you keep on updating yourself with the flight status on your phone so check if there has been any change in the boarding gates. Keep on checking. Ask of the boarding gates where can I get this terminal and all that. Be abreast with information with your phone and the 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 the, the flight website. So always be abreast with that. N now to the next question. So what was your first experience when your foot touched the holy ground? <laughs> Uh, let me check in this. I remember back in Ghana, our flight was supposed to leave at 10 o'clock okay. p.m. And then we had we had the waiting room and we didn't use the tunnel like okay. now it is. We had to take a train to mm -hmm. the plane and then board the stairs. That long stairs. Yeah, that long stairs. And at 10 o'clock when we were supposed, the announcement was made that due to weather um, disparities, of, I was like, God, I'm not leaving this airport. <laughs> Because we had to wait, they asked us to wait for one hour, and then at the end, which was 11, so our flight was one hour delayed, and at the end of that one hour, they still came, we, we appreciate your patience, people, I'm like, what is happening? See, I'm not going back home, I'm <laughs> sleeping here until whichever, the way is cleared, because... Your house, please, which is, I know, oh, yes, this time. it would not happen, so... 
finally around um 11 45 to 12 o'clock mm -hmm. we went to get on board to the bus and then eventually we got we on board to the stairs okay and it was amazing the flight was in the evening we slept a lot i, was, I slept a lot i didn't see much but from washington to colombia it mm -hmm. was in the daytime you saw a lot of see the clouds the, it was an amazing feeling and then eventually when we touched down i just couldn't believe i i, I a friend i was coming was like this is marvelous okay <laughs> so you are in ghana one night and the next morning you are in u.s like this is great i'm like yes this is this is the doing of the lord we were all in tears we were happy to be on the u.s um land and then we get to the airport at the baggage claim and we see somebody with a big billboard faces with our name on it wow. well, oh it was amazing and we ran to give him a hug they were there to pick the apparently the flight delayed and they had to wait for some time but eventually <laughs> eventually we were there no, 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 no. and we were able to um get in touch with them and then they got our luggage into the car and got us from the airport and he was so good he's like i know um this is your first time let me take you through the streets of Colombia. Mm -hmm. so we drove and drove for like two hours roaming around town before eventually he took us to a hotel okay and we had to lodge there had a big dinner and it was it was fun it was amazing let me let me see we we barely slept that night because we had a lot to talk about we were all <laughs> happy and it was a whole lot of fun all right so uh if you want to know anything about faces that uh, if you have between three or four options which agency you want to choose from faces is one of the best because they i think they are one of the the, the pioneers of cultural exchange program here in south carolina so they'll give you uh, a temporary place to stay before you get to your hotel, they will drive you to get your bank account, your social security, your phone number, and all of that. So they have this excellent package for their teachers. So she was sent to a, a temporary place to sleep before they arranged for uh, them to get their own apartment. So the next question is accommodation. How did you get a place to stay? Because it was one of the challenges uh, of people from other agencies. Mm -hmm. So how do you get places? So like you mentioned, faces is good. Faces, let me say faces um take teachers at heart. Mm -hmm. So they put in the necessary um Rudiment efforts for, mm -hmm. for to, to make your life comfortable. So we, like I said, they picked us right from the airport to the hotel they had booked for us. Mm -hmm. We stay there for three days and three nights because they will have a sort of orientation for you. And at the at the at the end of the third day mm -hmm um arrangements will be made for you to go to one of the already um teachers that are okay. in, in the in-country teachers yeah they call them angels yeah we call no we call them post family post families okay so before we come in they would um make arrangements with the teachers that are already mm -hmm. in place that we have new teachers coming in they need can accommodation you host, okay can you host them for like two weeks while they use that time to find wow. their own accommodation and they pay them for hosting wow. you because it's assumed that they might cook and mm -hmm. give you some okay so, and you might use your utilities so okay. they pay them i wow. think I, i've forgotten the exact amount but they have an amount they, they pay them every day for two weeks while you stay with your host family and then the angel also is like a coach okay like so a the, mentor yeah like a mentor so the host family is just giving you accommodation wow but the angel wow. is to take you around to your school to meet your principal mm -hmm and know where your school is so my angel spoke to my principal like she just came she doesn't have a car and then my principal was able to get another teacher that lived in my area to carpool okay. me so those arrangements the angel is going to make the angel is going to take you around to see whatever places you need to see and then um faces before we left the hotel like you mentioned faces has taken us to, to, to the take bank. Our finger, uh -huh. fingerprints get us bank accounts, get us um, SIM cards, and everything was in place. So within those two weeks, you would have to find your own accommodation okay. with the help of the angel as well. And so before we come in, they tell you that raise some money, at least $5,000. Yeah. And I wouldn't say necessarily 5000 It can be less because the good thing is if 
you are supposed you are able to put in all documentation your teacher certificate and everything on time by the end of the second month you should be receiving Very you should good. start receiving your salary so you need as a small money to yeah. live on before so we didn't um, three thousand to five thousand dollars is enough and so definitely you would with the help of the angel you would get an um, um accommodation. A, a, an accommodation and then you pay for it and then you start to live in and you know the start of life you basically don't have anything. anything there are some apartments that are furnished but those are expensive expensive some already have beds and then furniture and kitchen um sets and everything but those are expensive if you go for the regular apartment you would have to buy everything for okay. yourself so you can either start with getting a blow a lot of people started with a blow bed mm -hmm. and then maybe a few utensils you can cook with i mean it's a style of set of life as time goes on you'll be able to i mean acquire whatever yeah that you need. okay so i've always told my my followers that you have to network with teachers up here if you have any friend if you have any other person that you are coming with on the same program always network because getting accommodation is very difficult and here you need your credit line and all that yeah. so no one is trying to put your life or put your credit on on the edge so you need to network find people from your home country find people who are on the same program way so that they can link you up or even your principal mm -hmm. so mine this is how i got my accommodation so it was very challenging for me to get a place to stay and i was praying about it i'm that spiritual so i was praying about it lord help me out on this so one teacher on epi told him that his principal has secured an apartment for him in florida so i should call my principal i called my principal and then on that first day she couldn't pick so the secretary uh picked and uh, i explained everything to her so she said she would reach out to certain teachers there in the school so that if they can render some help or assistance to me that would be good on the next day i called and fortunately for me there was a Ghanaian teacher in that school so i was able to talk to this teacher and he went in for a shared apartment a three bedroom apartment and uh, other teachers were able to share with us so if you come here networking with other teachers you get cheaper accommodation and easy access of certain things that you may be needed so network 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 and that's very true because what i what uh, the information i gave earlier is the regular like the formal one mm -hmm. but with faces the last orientation you get in your country before you fly mm -hmm. because we have orientation sessions back at home before you come yeah in. so you know people you're yeah. on the same program so with. um the last orientation you break out into your home country session mm -hmm. and a, 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 a member of the country like this a Ghanaian will host you okay and talk to you in terms of in the terms that you understand let you know the reality on the ground, ground. okay yeah so the Ghanaian that <coughs> spoke to us apparently was the cousin of that friend of mine that shared the application okay okay and so he was like he was done with his five years had had his h1b1 and okay. was leaving colombia wait wait so it means there is a possibility of h1b after the five years oh yeah we don't talk about it so much because yeah. it is okay we make a special video on that so there is a possibility to stay in oh, the yeah. u.s there is a possibility after the five stay, years you only have to know what to do and do it good, at the right good. time. We don't talk about it so much because legally you're supposed to return back home. So we talk about that. There are ways out of it and all that. So I'll get an immigration attorney who can easily explain things to us properly. So let's continue on that. So he was moving from Colombia to a different state. Okay. And his apartment he was in his name and he hadn't, I mean, uh, and the lease ended yet. the lease. So he was like, we can take over the apartment if we want it. And that was the easiest way wow. for us. Because it was already furnished. See, he didn't want to spend money trying to move every furniture. So we already had beds and wow. then chairs and then utensils to fix. So wow. we had an easy way wow. out. We only had to pay the rent and wow. then the utilities. That's it. it. It was really helpful. So when you get in touch with people that are already here, they are able to help you out so that you don't come in stranded. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if you say help, we don't have money we don't have money so <laughs> don't think you're going to pay certain things on your behalf no. find your money the three thousand to five thousand dollars come with like, that so yeah. we can render any other help apart from money through assistance we don't have money 
I'm using all my money to dress. You know me. Mm -hmm. I don't joke with that. Okay, so to the next question, we're going to delve deeper into the job details. So, what was your date of job commencement? Um, we we started um, work the latter part of August. August, okay. Because that's where summer ends. So, okay. let's say the first, the, the last week of August, mm -hmm. that was the, the time we went to um, the classroom. classroom. We started working in the classroom. And... What was your first time experience? This is the most fun part of my interviews. Yeah. The first time experience. I mean, I had mm -hmm. mentioned earlier that I had taught in Ghana for 10 years. So mm -hmm. you can say I'll, <laughs> I'm a senior teacher in mm -hmm. Ghana. I have the experience because in Ghana, with when the um, track system started, mm -hmm. we had a lot of students. My school is one of the most populated student schools in my region. Okay. And so I could have a class of 50 students. I could still stand before these 50 students and, then and command everybody. Command them, have a silent class, teach my lessons, get my work done, everything in place. And I felt like, oh, I'm doing my job. Listen, I stepped into the American classroom for the very first time and I felt like I didn't know how to teach. <laughs> I'm like, what's happening around me? Nothing is working. Like, nothing yeah, is working. Nothing, uh, you cannot, nothing is being connected. Like, the students come in when you're my school, when students are coming in, you stand up at the door and then you receive you, you them. You receive them to the class. Um, you, you say good morning to them. Some would respond, some would not mind you. And your accent will definitely betray you. Your accent. Yeah. It will betray you for the first time. Yeah. Some will even ask, the moment you say good morning, like, okay, where are you from again? <laughs> uh, uh, oh, okay, Never mind. Baby. Never mind, and then they go in, and then you you start introducing yourself and all that. They look at you quietly, and then the next minute, there's yeah, a flipping class. Like everybody is doing what they want to do. People are sitting on their deck. Some people are talking. Some people are jumping. People are on their. Some students are on their phone. It's mm -hmm. a whole lot. It looks like a movie scene. Like <laughs> what's happening here? And then you try to even talk to them and. They just look at you and they go on what they are doing. I'm like, hold on for a minute. Okay. So for my first class, I didn't really know what to do. I was, I was like overwhelmed with what was happening. That's the word. I was overwhelmed. And this is a, a, a country where we have a lot of... And basic that they have the best education system. Yes. And we have a lot of laws and regulations. <laughs> you don't touch a student. You don't even shout at them. They have their privacy. No, no. That word. They have even, their rights. That, that word even makes no sense to me. How can you be in a classroom and still say, I need my privacy? But that's the, the reality on the ground. You are trying to redirect the student, and then you'll be like, hold on, hold oh, on. Don't. I need my privacy. Don't touch like, me. Don't, yeah. Don't touch me. So it was a whole lot. That first class, I didn't really know what was going on, and I didn't know how to handle it. So I just sat in my chair. And I was just looking at them until um, in school too, we are giving mentors. Mentors, yeah. So definitely it's the first day they'll come check on you. She came in and then she, she, she tried to put them in order. And one thing I realized is the fact that they don't do it to you because you are an international. It's the normal thing. It's the normal thing. They do it to everybody because she even had a lot of challenge. You saw them, them in them, order. yeah. And then after that class, she started talking to me about because, like I mentioned, we had had orientations, but we weren't we weren't dealt in. Those that. are theory things. Yes, it's a new thing in the yes. class. They wouldn't they wouldn't tell you this or that, but it's just the normal, I mean, routine that you go by. So she she talked to me a lot. I mean, this this how this, I'm like Miss How, this is not how students back in my country act. <laughs> Students are quiet. Students know their and place. Respectful. Students are respectful. Students do not talk back at teachers. I said all that because I was run, like I just I just had to let it out. And she was like, breathe, breathe, <laughs> Mr. Pom, please breathe. She was stopping my voice like, yeah, I understand. But this is how these students are here. So you know what? We are not going to compare them with the students mm -hmm. back at home. We are going to try to manage, manage. them. That's the word. I'm like. How do I manage? Because I, I don't have this experience. I have never seen this before. Like, I have never seen students. Like, you tell a student to keep quiet, and she's like, Why are you yelling at me? Why? Like, I don't even know what to do again. Because back at home, when students are talking, you can shout, Keep quiet. And the whole class quietly. It's different here. Like, 
and then she had to take me through a whole lot of things to get my mind prepared so that first day she had to stay with me for the rest of the day for the other classes that came in and then i was learning from her how she was interacting with the students and how she was trying to get them to put in order this is one thing mm -hmm. when we come in here you are all, you are definitely going to have that cultural shock, cultural shock. that was my next thing because mm -hmm. It's a like new I've terrain. Said, new terrain. We have a certain way of doing things back in our country, and you don't expect certain things to be happening in a classroom setting. It is so normal in America. And the reason is that, in as much as we are being taught back in Ghana not to speak up to adults, you don't re talk back to adults. Your hands are behind your back, you, you are apologizing, you are quiet. Children here are brought up to speak up. More exposed. That is and that is how they are being trained to speak up, and in a, it makes sense in a certain way because from the kind of training we get back we are timid. We are timid. We are limited. You get to a certain point in life, you can't even talk for yourself. You can't even define it, um, defend yourself because you have always been suppressed yeah. to a certain limit, and that's where we have stayed till now. But this is a point that the student knows their right. They know what what is in for them. They know what is good for them and they will request for it. So we would think they are being disrespectful from where we are coming from. But when you get time to learn their culture, embrace their culture and they then are fun to be with. see things from their point of view, you understand them. And trust me, now if I am to raise my kids, I would love to raise them with that same, that, that same <laughs> sort of exposure. Because the Ghanaian way, though we would term it as respectful, but it's a lot of limitation Timidity, yeah. on the yeah. On the child so Unlocked. i mean it was a whole lot in an american classroom for the first time but i mean we've been able to pull through okay so that is the hardest part of the job so it is never easy if you have ego issues if you think you are the boss in your home country oh, no. don't come here. You don't boss here don't come here so on my first day i had this uh student and the one other thing before even i mentioned that know how to address them some prefer to be addressed him others want to be uh, addressed as her so ask the students if you think she or he looks like a gender you are thinking of ask first because this is a new system that you're going to face so this girl when i started talking she she just moved her hand a boss in my own country a boss trying to say that you are yeah <laughs> my, my breast stinks tell me that my breast stinks and they, they 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 just want to hear that you are coming from africa and an african trying to teach me though they are blacks but they don't know their history yes they don't know their roots so if, if they know that you are coming from nothing that you're going to tell them that you're going to sink down oh yeah it takes time i, I know you will get there it takes time for them to listen to you yeah one most important thing to make you successful in an american classroom is building relationships. relationship you have to be able to build relationship with your students you know, back at home, student-teacher relationship is like the <laughs> boss type. The teacher is the boss. No, you have to come to their level, understand what they love, share in their interests, show that you care for them, even beyond the class. Be part of the community yes. as well. And then, I mean, try to have some fun moments with them. Yeah. And then with time, they would, they would know that, um, oh, you love them. And so let me also try loving this teacher let me also try listening to them other than that you can stand in class and teach the whole day and they will listen to nothing and if they say they'll frustrate you they can really frustrate you <laughs> they can make your life a living hell you wouldn't even want to be in your your own classroom <laughs> because they step in and all they can do is make fun of you and make you miserable that is how they are they can team up to make you miserable <laughs> but if you if you love them if you understand them and if you build those connections with them they tend to also love you and then listen to you so that's one important so a small other the job i would say it is hard the job is hard so you need to come with the thickest skin i wouldn't say thick skin thickest skin because i know two Ghanaians who have returned to their home country i know one nigerian who has returned because of this early pressures yeah so you'll be stressed up on the first week i was i was really stressed up so with the with the advice of certain uh 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 all the teachers here they advise me that it's going to be well first year is the survival stage and yeah. right now my class is fun though they haven't stopped what they are doing but you need to change yeah you can be on top of your content but in the u.s 
we are it's here to manage the class that's one key thing they don't tell you because i remember with faces as part of the application you have a face-to-face -face interview a video call interview you'll be on top of your yeah. content but so when i my interview was scheduled, uh, scheduled i was busy going over content trying to prove myself on the day <laughs> and they never asked me any content question when we had the interview. classroom management it was all about classroom management i'm like why i remember they asked me a question like if a, t if a parent attacks you in class how are you going to handle it? And I, I stayed silent for a while because I well, never had a parent come to the classroom. Yeah, I was thinking, how is this? How will a parent come and attack me? But I stayed on for a while, and I'm like, um, I haven't had this experience before. But if it should happen, I, I definitely will seek the help of my principal. Yeah. And then she was like, Yeah, definitely, that's what you're supposed to do. And I was confused about the whole interview. I'm like, Why would they be asking those questions it until you real. get in, and then you realize that. In the American classroom, it's not about content, it's about classroom management. So, if you are not able to manage your students, forget, they are not listening to whatever you are nothing, teaching. Nothing. And one most important thing is you have to be fair. And fair. And fair. And then you have to be consistent with how you treat everybody. Because trust me, if somebody should talk and then you redirect the person, keep quiet. And the next person talks and you ignore it. That you is, see, that you is see, the end of you. you see, if it was me, yes, you... <laughs> they, they will tell you a bias. Yeah. So you should be able, to, you should consistently treat everybody fairly. You should be fair with your rules. If you tell them that nobody goes out this time, stay on that course. Don't, don't, don't go off at a point in time because the moment you go off, that's the end for you. So you should be consistent and you should be firm with your rules. And that, that is probably going to help you survive. So it is challenging, yes, because from where we are coming from, it's not like that. Let me say at this point, my tolerance is at 100%. My patience is at 100%. <laughs> and I, I wasn't, I was a very, very quick tempered person. Now you have but, changed. But now I have changed. So let me say positively, that is, that is an experience I, I love because you should be able to swallow up certain things. You don't act, they'll curse at you. Yes. So when something happens, you should be able to take your time, process it, and then think about how you're going to act. Because if you act wrongly, the law is going to grip you. You're going to, because this is not a Ghanaian class, you don't even shout at the student, you don't hit them. But the student is going to provoke you. So you as an adult, at the end of the day, when you do anything, they will ask you, what makes you a professional? That's why you're a professional <laughs> teacher. You should be able to Contain. take up those things. You should be able to contain this and you it will make you look stupid in front of them so you would have to be able to tolerate a lot of things and then know think about certain things properly before you act and that's one thing that uh like you said if you are that proud type these students will humble you so you have to come down to their level and you have to like be, be tolerant that's the key word be tolerant and with time, when they get to know you, they, they normally do those things because they don't know you. When they get to know you and love you because you have built relationship with them, they will start to respect you. It's not going to be 100%, but it's going to be better. So like okay. you said, the first year is a survival year. If you're able to pull through first year, you would pick up a lot of experience. And then going forward, the subsequent years is going to be better. So a, a, a small add up here. We have a bribery system in our classroom. A bribery system. If you're a teacher, that is very stingy. You won't always hold your money to yourself. So this is it. You can tell your students if they can comport themselves to the end of the class. You give them snacks. Hey. Oh, yeah. You'll be teaching in a cemetery. That day, no one will talk. <laughs> so I always have snacks with me. So the bribing system is not only with the Ghana police. And it's not just about comporting but work. You know, back in Ghana, it's like... Uh, students are already motivated. Students, students are already right. motivated to work, or they see it as a responsibility Good. for them. Students here are, are less motivated to work. They don't want to work. So you would give a student an assignment, and then you'll be like, it's too I, many. I don't want to do this. Why do you want me to do this? It doesn't make sense. Okay, yeah, explain. And that's it. There are certain <laughs> choice of words. Um, back in Ghana, we feel it's an insult. Like this doesn't. If a student tells a teacher this doesn't, doesn't make sense, sense you're gonna. Be, it's gonna be a whole lot of, I mean, issue back mm -hmm. in Ghana. But here, oh, it's just, just like a snack. <laughs> yes, yeah, he's just trying to tell you that he doesn't understand what you're trying to put across. Doesn't make sense. So you have to also be come familiar with certain languages they use. And like I was saying, um, they they are less motivated to work. So you have to find a way to motivate them. Like snacks is one of them. They really like snacks and candies. 
and last year i had a student that really loved banana mm -hmm. i remember i watched a, a tiktok video that a uh, was talking about that, and it's people were commenting and laughing but i was i was like it's true because i had that experience she was um destiny this girl is very smart but she is so lazy to do work so she comes to class and she doesn't want to work but there was one day I had banana on my table she came and she was like can i have one of your banana and i'm like no that's my life she's like please give me banana and i'll do all the work you give me today and i'm like it okay you. finish your work and i'll give you banana and she was the first to finish all the assignments mm -hmm. that day and i gave her banana so i was like this is gonna help every day i had banana on my Bribery table, system and every day <laughs> destiny was the first student to finish her work mm -hmm. and she would come for one finger on, of banana mm -hmm. so you have to find a way to motivate these students like snacks candies sometimes when they behave well when they do their work you just pass them out and it's not necessarily going to be from your money because at the beginning of the school year that they, they give you like 350 dollars for, for your classroom mm -hmm. um, needs so you can keep some of those monies for um, those things okay. to motivate the students to get them to behave well and then to do their work and one major thing i want to plead with any teacher who has had a job offer so if you think you are that uh, a committed christian please please and please and please yeah keep your faith it is not the classroom where you're going to uh invent morning devotion and bible studies you know if you want to spread the gospel you can find one student who you think is ready to accept that but not always shall we pray keep it to yourself keep it to yourself because in the u.s classroom different cultures different faith different different uh, uh, sexual orientation so keep your faith to yourself and your agendas keep it to yourself okay and that's one thing they really emphasize when we have the um orientation orientation because they don't want you to fall a victim if you if you talk to a student about god or if you talk to your class let's say it's a general devotion mm -hmm. if the student goes home and these students talk about whatever happens in anything class that happens home. so today my teacher prayed and if the mom is not a christian they feel like you are trying to you impose a religion on them and if they, they they take it up legally you are going to be in trouble so you don't pray you don't talk about um sexual uh, matters because they have a lot of people with different sexual uh, orientations. Uh, orientations. Accept them as and as they come to you with. Don't complain. Don't criticize. It's everything is normal here. Trust me, everything is normal. <laughs> so you would see it as abnormal because of where you are coming from. But accept that is the, is the culture here, and then get used to it to avoid any kind of trouble. So I had this student in my class, and what they enjoy most is if they bring up relationship matters you, this is my yeah. job and you give in to them you yeah. start asking them oh they always come around you so i had this guy i told him so what actually do you tell the girls so that they fall for you ah oh, mr Aubrey, mr Aubrey, <laughs> don't you know i said okay teach me teach me and i told him aren't you so small for that mr Aubrey, age is just number age is so don't be surprised love matters is a trivial in here it's accepted is very accepted because even if you call parents they are students that are sometimes hugging and touching each other too much if you call parents i mean they, they don't have a problem with it they'll be like, a parent asked me they are dating right i said yes so so what do people do when they are dating it's okay to hug and kiss i'm like okay okay like you can't say anything because the parent is okay with it so why why do you have a problem with it okay. so you just have to accept things the way they are here. so you spend enough time on the cultural shock so all these uh if you join the telegram group on tiktok i have the link over there just click on it it will take you there it is not difficult just click on that link that lies above the youtube icon and click on the youtube icon it will take you straight to the youtube channel you can see a lot of videos on such uh topics and uh you can abrace yourself with this information now so what are some of the uniqueness what are some of the features of the u.s educational system comparing that to ghana um the edu educational system i would say is consistent mm -hmm. and it's flexible good when it comes to elementary middle and then high school, high school. it's flexible looking at the uh, the uh, the the curriculum mm -hmm. it's not as loaded as we have back at home okay i always say that and i i would say it's a plus when 
Ghanaian students coming. Yeah, we are very because smart. They really come into excel. Very, very, very smart. Students here do not learn to retain. That's mm -hmm. what I've realized. So a lot of students, when you take their computers of them, they, they don't really remember Blank. anything because they have access to the computer all the time. But as back back at home, we learn to retain what we call the baba mm -hmm. so you have it in mind like you, you have everything you have learned in mind, mind that you can write your exam and pass without any sort of uh, references but yeah. here it's not like that and the examination is so flexible last last year was my first year and when we we're having the end of year exam it wasn't time -bound. only three subjects it wasn't time bound english math and science that's what you're going to write that's the mandatory exams yes. for the state and even for the english they write the tda for one day mm -hmm. which is like the essay and then they do the, the reading and, all and that. the reading on another day and it's not time bound at and they have makeup time when we sit on uh, we start the test at nine the test ends when the last student ends ends like even if they want to spend the whole day on it they are allowed and I, I realized that after every two hours we go on snack break they come in to give them snack they get up and stretch use the bathroom and then come back and continue with the test i'm like this is like who wouldn't pass test if this is what was practiced in ghana like all students will be coming out with a's but in ghana we are so much forced to learn a whole lot of things and produce a whole lot of things within two hours you sit on the wire paper and then you have to produce everything like it's it's hectic it's stressful i go here and i'm like we are really killing students back at home i don't i don't know if the if gs will just get the chance to revise, revise certain things, certain things yeah. in our educational system especially our examination because you don't expect students to go to school from jhs1 through to jhs3 uh -huh. and whatever they have learned within three years they're going to be assessed, they're on. Going to be assessed on and it's on one day in five hours okay, in four hours yeah that's too much <laughs> because here what they are assessed on is even semestral basis and even with that they have all the luxury of time to write the student can pause the test and say i don't want mm -hmm. to continue and come and make it up another day and it's allowed so <laughs> it's the system is really flexible really 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 flexible, really flexible. so i mean it's, it's high time we um uh, certain um things are revised back at home because students are i would say students are being maltreated back at home okay so yeah i think uh these two countries uh have their own uniqueness so Ghanaian students are being forced to learn, but it has its own advantages. So, I've been to, though I'm not a math teacher, I'm not an English teacher, but I've been to these classes, and the students are struggling to pass. The reason being that the students are not motivated, intrinsically motivated. But Ghanaian students, they know education is the only key that they, yeah, they want. We, got back at home. we have nothing else. If you want to make it in life, education. So, this is the problem right now. I was asking myself, why is it that these people are advancing? They have all it takes. They but Ghanaians, we are so smart, but we are not advancing. So yeah. you can argue with yourself. Just make that research for us. So Ghanaian students are very smart. When, you get, when they get here, if yeah. you give your child the initial education back home in Ghana, and he comes to start uh, school here in first grade, the kind of progression or performance he's going to put up here yeah. is really marvelous. I, I have um, friends colleague teachers that I came in that brought in their students mm -hmm. and almost every week they are sweeping awards for best students. Yeah. I mean if you go to the, uh, their colleges, what we call universities mm. back at home, a lot of students on scholarship are foreign students. They are good. The students here are not motivated to learn. So when our, our students come in, they excel so fast and they, they sweep up all the awards and all the scholarships. That's, a, that's like a plus. But on the other hand, there's, that's a lot of stress back at home. A lot of stress. A lot system. of stress okay so guys just make that research for us i don't know why they are still we are still struggling and then when you come up here there are a lot of things that are going to aid your studies so one of the uniqueness is uh the provision of tlms teaching and learning materials you have a lot even in my studio i have a lot of paints that we can i have a lot of resources that we use in our class in math you have a smart board you have they, they have access to calculators whatever you need that is in there you just have to put in the request list, put in the request and then you have it within the, 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 the next few days anything that you the want the district has a whole lot of resources that you can just go pick up we have a lot a whole lot of applications that the students can work on that are interactive 
that help them to build up their i mean build up knowledge content wise so everything is at our, our disposal here okay so now this is the crucial point i know many teachers back in ghana never ever want to alter a word on your salary but here in the u.s you can even know your principal salary and where can you find that on the district's website i want to ask my guests i'm always putting my salary out there because you can never hide it and you are being paid according to the, uh, the years of experience in teaching so they have this base salary uh, you come here with zero experience they upgrade you if you turn that in your certificate for the state and they will upgrade you to if, if you have 10 years if you have 20 years in teaching they're going to upgrade your salary and i want my and your qualifications so i want my guests I, I know ladies will never be specific on that give us a range how much is the salary after taxes okay after taxes like you said you're i do not hide my you know my already i'm uh -huh. chipping in um i'm just a um, bachelor's degree, bachelor's degree. Uh -huh. because i finished um i completed my degree uh -huh. course in ghana and i didn't see any distinct increment in yeah. my salary and that even deterred me to pursue my master's, master's degree yeah but when i go here it has been one of the things that i have really regretted on yeah. and i am um, I have started working on it okay. because here every single qualification counts. counts. Every single qualification you are being paid on it. So currently, I'm being paid on my 10 years experience, mm -hmm. 11 years now, because I already have spent one year, and then my degree certificate. Okay. And I am receiving a little close to four thousand um, dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Four thousand dollars. Let me say, if you get four thousand dollars here from where we are coming from and you should use let's say you use two thousand dollars to pay your rent feed yourself transportation gas and all that let's say you are even able to save just a thousand dollars a month that's that's more than ten thousand ghana cities at home yeah so i don't see why you are still what are you still waiting on because you're going to teach for 20 years in ghana and you can save ten thousand ghana cities based on your salary that that's is it your entire pension pay will never will not even be up to ten thousand dollars no and that pension pay you can earn in a month so what are you still doing back at home like aside all the stress all these challenges we have <laughs> mentioned the good thing because i had a uh, one of the teachers that we came in to meet they were trying to enlighten us about what we are going we should expect and then when they kept talking about the classroom experience i was so quiet just like don't get scared after going through all this, when you get the dollars, it it more it it come it kind of um puts you enlighten your spirit, and it's true. At the end of the day, yes, you are going to struggle, and it's the same struggling you are going through in Ghana. But you are earning peanuts. But you come here, you go through the struggle, and you are earning something that is worth it. That is more than worth it. Like I said, you can earn your pension pay in one month here. Because our currency, there is a vast difference Extreme in the currency. Right. All right. So, at least with a bachelor's degree, and based on your number of experience, you should be getting three thousand and above. Um, and above. So one other thing I'll chip in is, uh, if you spend the money here, it's nothing. But if you send it over back home, because we are here to find the money and push it back home. Yeah. So if you, if as she's saying, if you're able to save from five hundred dollars to thousand dollars. If you are single, if you're married, it's quite unrealistic. So if you're able to save that amount, you send it back home. If you have any project that you're doing back home, it's, an, it's enough money. Even if you're not going to take it back home, you're going to spend it here. Take $500, multiply by 12 months, $6,000. And if you and make $6,000 every year, every year. That's, that's, that's a big kind of, um, It's a big money. It's big money for any investment or whatever you plan on you doing. Plan on doing. Okay, so that is for the salary part. Uh, we'll find time and dive deeper in the budget aspect. So all of the agencies will uh, enlighten you on the expenditure and the budget that you're going to face up here. Uh, so in my, uh, my sponsor made us aware that rent is going to take like 30 to 35% of my salary. Mm -hmm. And it is true. Yeah. If you want to get your own privacy, that's at the amount you're going to pay. But if you're able to network, get a shared apartment, it can come down to let's say 15 percent or 20 percent so for beginners go for shared apartment mm -hmm. and when you think your family is going to join you you then 
uh, transform into, let's say, a full uh, two-bedroom uh, apartment or three-bedroom apartment. And that's the time it's going to take like 30 to 35 percent of your salary. And even still, so you're going to have uh, some uh, reasonable amount of money left uh, after that deduction. Okay, so we are heading to the conclusion part of the interview. So if you haven't subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for. It's not going to take any years from your life. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go to TikTok. Uh, I have lots of information out there for you. Subscribe and follow the, te the Telegram group on TikTok. So go there, click on that link uh, in my bio section, and it will lead you straight to the Telegram page. People are there. People I have, I wouldn't say I have trained. People I have assisted uh, with this same information that you are seeking are there to help you. They have been really, really helpful, guys. I appreciate you so much because I've been busy in school, and they are answering all the questions that you may need from me. So they are there, ready to assist you as well. So, uh, Miss Beatrice, now we're getting to the latter part of the interview. Now, uh, is it worth it to come on this trip? Is it worth it? Yeah. I would say yes. I would say it's like 300% worth it. Okay. To me, and then to any other Ghanaian that I have had the opportunity to talk to, mm -hmm. yes, it is worth it. It is life transforming. It is an opportunity you shouldn't miss. And like I said, with faces, you would end up going through the whole process. It's like you're virtually paying for nothing and then get the opportunity to come in Ghana. And we being on the J1 visa, like we said, you still get the opportunity to try this lottery. And if you win, you have your green card. You can even not just try the lottery. If you work here for a number of years, you can you get are the green card easily. To apply for the green card and that you're also going to get. So, yes. It is worth it. And in conclusion, I will urge everybody, especially our dear teachers, we have been there. We know how it feels to be in a Ghanaian classroom. When you have all the ideas you want to put up to make your life better, but you don't have the means to, to make it come to um, life. So please leave that comfort zone. Step up. Take the application. They are not too much. Like people are complaining. It is worth it. Get it done. If you are being chosen, you get the opportunity to come and make your life better here. And trust me, you would love it when you come in. All right, guys. So thank you for staying with us. Uh, I'm so, so happy uh, to get my colleague teacher here who, uh, upon all her busy schedule, she's been able to make it uh, to give us all the vital information that you need here in the U.S. Guys, if you haven't subscribed, kindly go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. My, on my next video, I promise to bring you someone who is on H-1B visa, a Zimbabwean. Someone from Zimbabwe. As I said, my channel is geared towards Africans. I know I have my colleague YouTuber, uh, Dr. Britton, uh, Malaika. They are targeting uh, a lot of people, but I am trying to motivate Africans. I want to see a lot of Africans, Ghanaians, Nigerians, Ugandans, Tanzanians, uh, South Africans, a lot of Africans. It, it's it's so nice to see your your fellow Africans in the same school and sharing the same uh, a classroom with. So that is the reason why I'm bringing you this series titled News from the Other Side. So stay tuned for the next episode and God bless you. Yeah. Bye bye. bye, -bye.